Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 of this video series where we take you with us on our first home buying journey. In this video we will apply for a pre-approval. Now this was our first step but it doesn't have to be yours. You don't actually need a pre-approval to go house hunting seriously. A pre-approval is just an evaluation by a lender to figure out how much you are likely to be approved for. We decided to get a pre-approval first to determine what our borrowing capacity is. And if we do find a house we like, we can make an offer with confidence that we are likely going to be able to borrow that amount. There are some cases where applying for a pre-approval may not be the best idea. For example, if you think your situation is likely to change, because you could get a pre-approval but then get rejected for a home loan for things such as career change. Other reasons can be interest rates change, change in the lender's policies, a sudden change to your credit score, and or other major changes really. Alright, now when it comes to applying for a pre-approval, there are multiple lenders out there that would be happy to have your business. We decided to go with a mortgage breaker to save time and money. For the expertise and guidance, for them to advocate for us, and to streamline the process. To save time and money, brokers can have a look at a wider range of lenders than we might be able to on our own. And potentially find a better interest rate which will save us a lot of money in the end. They can also handle a lot of paperwork which will free up our time to do other things. For expertise and guidance, like we have said before, this will be our first property that we buy. A good broker should have a deep understanding of the mortgage market and different loan options. They should be able to explain the pros and cons of various products and help us choose the best one for our situation. To advocate for us, well, a broker should work for you and not the lender. So they might be able to negotiate on our behalf and try to get the best term possible for us. And streamline the process. A broker should handle most of the communication with lenders, which can simplify the whole mortgage application process. So the mortgage broker we decided to go with is Squirrel. On their website, they have stated that they arrange over $3 billion worth of loans per year, which gives them negotiating power and access to better rates. More options because they are a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform as well. And their advisors are paid the same no matter which lender you end up with. So they are not incentivized by lenders to push you into certain loans. Another reason for going with them is because we trust them. I have talked about Squirrel before on this channel, but that was from an investing point of view. So this will be the first time we have a look at Squirrel from a borrower's perspective. To apply for a pre-approval with Squirrel, head to the Squirrel website and under the mortgage drop-down header, click apply online. It states that the application will take about 10 minutes, but in our experience it took longer than that because we kept misunderstanding the questions they were asking. Click on let's get started and it will ask you for your name, email address and a phone number. If you are applying as a couple like we are, it will ask for the second person's detail later. So put the first person's details here. It will ask if you want to buy a property to live in, investment property or to refinance your mortgage. We will also tell it that it's our first home. Then it will ask for a guesstimate value of a property you want to buy. Although our income is low, we put down $800,000 as because of our savings, we could scrape up a 20% deposit for a $800,000 loan. Another option you have is that you could enter a property address if you have already found a property that you want. Then it'll ask about your deposit. Now this is where we got confused and we entered our joint deposit, but later we found out it was asking for the first person's deposit information. Once you entered that, it'll ask you if you're planning to buy with someone else. Else. That's when you type in the second person's details. Then it will ask for the first person's income details. Once you enter that, it will ask for the second person's income details. So the questions are how much you earn, your student loan balance if you have one, your job title, the name of your employer, and how long you have been in that role. We decided to blur some of this information because we want to avoid any potential conflicts with our employers for disclosing our salaries. But we are comfortable with telling you guys that our combined income from our employment is $143,000. After that, it will ask if you have any other source of income. I put down the amount of dividends I receive from my investments. Then it will ask how many dependents we have and then it will ask if we have any debts. I try to use my credit card as much as I can when it comes to paying for things. And if you don't know why I do that, then check out this video. And even though we both pay off our credit card in full, we still put them down here and tick this box that says paid off in full each month. Next was our monthly expenses. Now this part was super easy to answer because of the Kiwi Investment Spreadsheet that David has created. 
All you do is copy and paste your bank statement and it will automatically calculate your monthly spending on items such as groceries, petrol and more. It also has a whole bunch of other features to help you track your money quickly and easily. So do check out that video as well if you are serious about your personal finances. Next you put down your financial assets. We put down how much our stock portfolio is currently worth, how much our Kiwi saver is worth and how much we have in savings. For physical assets, we put down how much our car is insured for and for content and furniture, we put down a guesstimate of $10,000. Next, it will ask for a little bit more detail about you, such as your title and your current address. Then it asks if there's anything else you would like to tell Squirrel. The last question is how you heard about Squirrel and then submit. We are not done yet though. We still have to submit our supporting documents. And that includes a signed authority form that allows Squirrel to act on our behalf. Copy of your driving license or passport. Three of the most recent payslips. Your savings account statements from the last three months. I uploaded three most recent months of my Squirrel on-call account because the majority of my savings is with Squirrel. KiwiSaver withdrawal eligibility letter is the only document we could not upload. But don't worry, they are not expecting this straight away because we will need to phone our KiwiSaver provider to get this document. Transactional account statement from the last three months. Credit card statements from the last three months. And finally, a screenshot of our student loan balance. And we're done. You will be assigned a mortgage advisor straight away and the next thing we have to do is book in a time to have a chat with them. We booked our one for the 4th of July, which is this week depending on when you watch this video. Now, we want to share as much of our house buying process as possible. So we will write to Squirrel asking if it's okay for us to record our conversations with their mortgage advisor because we think it may be useful for you to hear that conversation as well. But it's important to note that none of this is intended as financial advice. It's just us sharing our personal journey for entertainment purposes only. See you in the next video.